Hi, I'm Nick from Fouchmatic Off Grid. Today I'm going to uh, do a little milling. Um, this was for uh, a project on a neighbor's house and I was trying to move kind of quickly. So uh, I didn't really slow down to explain anything, but Esther caught some, uh, some good shots of me uh, milling a six by six out of a relatively short log. And uh, I will do my best to explain it to you as I go. Hopefully it's useful to you to be able to see uh, how I do this. So I actually cut these uh, logs right off of the, uh, the guy's property who, uh, who I was doing the project for. Uh, this was a snag, uh, meaning the top of the tree was broken off and it had been there like that for... Um, more than a year and uh, so it was already good and dry but just still standing up so I'm able to take these and put them right into the project so to start out I usually um, I get the engine started uh, I don't use the mill all that often anymore so it usually sits um, without running uh, for quite a while in between projects so I just start it up and then uh, let it idle and warm up the engine while I uh, get everything set up. So I'm making 6 by 6s All of these logs are big enough to do a 6 by 6 I'm just looking for the one with uh, the least amount of rot, uh, but that still looks good and dry. So they have a little bit of a check in them, meaning just a, a little split. Uh, and that's a pretty good indication that it's it's dry. Uh, as long as it's not too big, it's not going to be a structural problem uh, of any kind. These logs are nice and small, relatively, much smaller than anything I did for the house. So I'm able to kind of just toss them around as I need to. I have to get the log right on uh, the right spot of the track where there's actually a clamp uh, to hold the log in place. So uh, with such a short log it's got to go right there. So I'm taking this 6x6 out of the center of the log um, which means I want to mill it right on center. I'm gonna measure off of the track to the center of the log uh, on both sides and as long as they measure uh, relatively the same then I'm good to go. Uh, these I really lucked out on they don't have much taper to them and uh, they're fine sitting just the way they are. Now I'm just gonna move the mill over to uh, this, the end where it's actually gonna start so that it's over there while I uh, get the log clamped in place. I like to throw a little stick in there so it doesn't roll at me while I'm working. Uh, with the engine idling, it's, it's pretty unlikely that the blade would be moving at any point. Uh, but better safe than sorry. I just don't want that thing uh, rolling towards me while I'm trying to do the work. So this mill has a cool little clamp that swings up and um, and holds the log in place. I usually have to carve out a little flat spot or just a little divot for one side of the clamp to fit into. Uh, just because it's hard to clamp uh, a round surface like that. Then the other side slides into place you can see it uh, sort of racking into place there and getting stuck and then you just tighten down the the eye screw that screw is sharpened on the on the other end so it really digs into the log um, and prevents any uh, rotation it, it does a really pretty nice job of holding it in place uh, I set it kinda low so that I would stay out of the way of the cut it has to stay down below the cut then since this log is so short I wedged the other end just so it doesn't slide uh, side to side. You can see the little divot there that I made with the hammer and that helps that part of the clamp to dig in. 
So with it sitting right where I want it to sit, I'm going to lay out the rough shape of my 6x6 relative to the center of the log. And I just really rough it out so that I have a couple of marks to go by so I know uh, roughly where to set the blade. Once it gets into setting final thickness, I make another mark. Uh, the reason why I, I mill it on center is that uh, really the only way that it's going to deform as it dries is it'll twist, um, which is actually better than it taking a, a turn one way or the other. If you, if you don't mill relatively on center, as it dries, it will change shape <coughs> and in an uncontrolled way. So I, I set the blade right to that top mark that I made, and then uh, I pull the throttle all the way. This has got a centrifugal clutch on it, a lot like a lawnmower, uh, when <coughs> it hits a certain RPM, the blade engages. Go slow right at first, just to check that I'm making my mark, and then I start into it. This is just like any other power saw, in that you just have to feel how much the saw is able to do, and sort of listen to the RPMs of the of the motor. Make sure you're not pushing too hard, or it's gonna be more likely that the blade wanders or binds up or uh, otherwise causes a problem. So you really just have to feel it and uh, only go as fast as the saw is able to go. So that's it. That's that first cut. And then uh, I take the engine down to idle again so the blade stops moving. I got a whole pile of those going. They make good firewood. I raise up the blade just a little bit so I'm not making contact on the way back. Mostly I'm just looking now for uh, any rot or bug holes or anything that I wasn't able to see because it was inside the tree. That's my first look at what the inside of that tree looks like. I just reverse the, reverse the clamp and back that eye screw out. Give the sliding part a little tap and then uh, make sure and, and drop it down. I'm just in the habit of making sure it drops all the way down because if it's up on the track um, and I'm not using it, then, uh, then the saw will run into it. So for this second side, that clamp makes a whole lot more sense because uh, it's meant to register against the flat side of that clamp. That clamp is 90 degrees to the saw bed and therefore 90 degrees to the blade. Uh, so theoretically, if you have that set up and clamped against that flat side, your second cut is 90 degrees to your first cut. However, it's not always that perfect. And I like to set, uh, check plumb on that side. I know that I've set my track up level, so if that side is plumb, uh, then I know those two cuts are going to be 90 degrees to one another. This is sort of the most important part of the setup. That first cut, you're just making a flat surface. The second cut is where you're actually uh, determining whether your beam is going to be square or not. I just sit, line it up to my to my other rough mark. Those are the marks I made before I even started. Set the blade spinning and then start into it. Now normally I would, um, when I'm doing a lot of milling, uh, I'll actually peel the bark off of all the logs. 
Uh, I do that because it saves uh, blades, uh, bl blade life. It, it lengthens the life of the blade. There's a lot of dirt and crud uh, in the bark, especially if you've had to drag the logs at all. And all that dirt and stuff will tend to dull your blades. So normally I would, um, normally I would peel the bark, but this time I'm I'm going kind of quick, and uh, I decide uh, not to do it. But when you're milling a lot, it it really makes a difference. So there's that second cut. Raise up the blade so I don't make contact on the way back. Release the clamp. Now that's the last time I have to use that clamp um, because once it has those flat sides it's able to sit on the saw bed and the saw bed has these little dogs that it slides up against um, so that uh, so that it, it won't move. The, the saw bed really just holds it right where it needs to be. So here I'm making my, my actual size mark um, rather than trusting my my rough mark I make a pretty little tick mark and then try and go right to it takes a little bit of adjustment to find exactly the right spot once I have it uh, I'm into it I'm making sure to go nice and slow um, so that the blade doesn't wander. This particular saw doesn't have an adjustable guide for different widths. Um, it always has the same amount of blade exposed, so on something narrow like this, it uh, it, it could wander. So here I'm I'm setting the I'm making sure that I I keep my blade set. Uh, the same way for the third and fourth cut uh, because I want this to be a square piece. I just forgot and I raised it up a little bit on the way back but then I, I reset it so that it's pretty much in the same place. Now there's not a whole lot of uh, width on the saw bed so this piece seemed a little tippy to me meaning that the blade is up kinda high and there's not much purchase uh, against the saw bed so I didn't want the the blade to be able to tip this piece over so I just help it out a little bit with the bar I'm just putting a little bit of pressure against it so that it, the saw can't throw it off of there and of course I have to move that bar out of the way and go on the other side. It just takes a little bit of pressure to be able to keep that piece from tipping. I suppose if my saw bed were set up perfectly um, maybe it wouldn't rock or tip at all but uh, it, it probably isn't perfect. But that's sort of the um, the reality of, of rough cut timber as far as I've experienced it is that uh, you're really just getting close if you want anything an exact size then uh, you're probably gonna have to do another uh, milling operation a planer or, or some other thing to get it exactly right but the rough cut timbers uh, sure work for for all sorts of stuff including our our timber frame and this guy's uh, railing posts. So that turned out okay. I was pretty happy with those uh, six by sixes. There it is.
Let me know if you have any questions about uh, milling lumber. I'll be happy to tell you what I know um, and what my experience with this mill has been. There you have it. I hope that's useful to you. Uh, thanks for watching.